help us open with our opening song, Holy Holy Way. Thank you. That was beautiful. I love that song. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I uh, just love the fact that it was here and also the, the people watching online. My name is Dennis Ashley and I'm the, the minister here at the Center of Spiritual Growth. And I just want to welcome you because what a fantastic day, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice out there. So I asked Gerald if she'd come up and light our candle just to kind of get us started. Geraldine said to me, it's not going to be repeated last week. We are keeping the gate open on the ladder. <laughs> so as she lights the candle, it's just this nice reminder that there is this spark of divinity within us. All right. <laughs> and what happens, I think, is that any time during the service, you know, I mean, our minds can wander, whether it's when I'm talking or the music or, or anything, you know, uh, especially when I'm talking, right? <laughs> so what I'd like to say is from time to time, just glance up there at that light and just let it remind you that, oh yeah, I'm here because there's a spark of intelligence, this spark of wisdom, this spark of divinity deep within, and we can access that any time that we want to. As a reminder, I've got... Um, the, uh, the prayer box right here. 
uh, and uh, I invite you to put a prayer request in for yourself, for somebody else, or for a situation in the world. And there's also two more prayer boxes just right outside the door there, and so uh, we'd love it if you did that. Would you join me in an opening prayer? And there's so much going on in our lives, let's just set it aside. Let's set everything aside and let's just choose to be here for the next hour. It's a spirit of God deep within us. We are blessed by those twin gifts of faith and wisdom. And as we walk this human journey, help us remember exactly why we're here. Help us to understand ourselves, to understand others, to understand the world in which we find ourselves. But more than anything, help us to understand this spark of God that is deep within us. And so we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Please stand if you can and join us in one great power. My name is Roy Healy. I'm the celebration assistant. And given that last song, we already, that you guys started without me. It's already a celebration. So welcome. Glad you're here. Welcome to the Unity Center of Spiritual Growth, where all people who wish to worship here are welcome. We are a minister that honors and respects the many names of God, the many faces of God, and the many paths to God. We are an inclusive and affirming church, and we strive to live love and uplift lives. We bless people of all races, sexual orientation, color, political beliefs, or anything else they may or you may have felt judged on in the past. We're just really happy that we are all here together and that you have joined us. Thank you. Let me introduce our musicians today. We have a family event over here. <laughs> so this is the Gather Call clan with Justin, Paul, 
and Gwen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have our wonderful violinist, and I'm just sitting here blocking on your name. Judith, 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 thank you. And Debbie and Patty are leading us. And then we have the boys in the box. It is, it's all boys again. We have Brian, who's doing PowerPoint, and Jim, who's doing sound, and oh, Joe, bless you, who's doing live streaming again. Thank you guys so much. Gary, Gary, I missed you. Sorry. Oh, yeah. And you got your Unity shirt I on. I you, too, okay? <laughs> bless you. Thanks for being here. And thanks to everybody who makes all of this happen. We've got people scrubbing toilets and mowing lawns and watering flowers and taking care of kids, and it all comes together for us to appreciate. So bless all of us for making it happen. And anybody that wants to help out, just let somebody know. So if you are the first, this is your first time here today and you are brave enough to let us know, would you raise your hand? We all have been here once or twice. Oh, there's somebody, yay. Thanks for joining us. We hope you have a great time and there you've received a welcome packet. And if you are the first time on live stream, we ask that you click on the connect with us, say that three times fast, click on the connect with us tab on the website and thank you for joining us. Hopefully, instead of yakking, everybody has read the announcements and paid close attention to them. Is there still a quiz on there? Are you still asking questions? Okay, so if you don't know the answers, he will tell you uh, what the answers are. We also have announcements listed in the program and on our website. But let me read a few of the announcements to you. We Are One is a holistic fair that's going to occur here on August 27th. It's, it's going to be really, really cool. There's going to be a lot of vendors, a lot of great ideas, inspirational new thought stuff, and we're going to charge the vendors for being here, and we're going to have food, and we're going to have books, and we're going to have lots of exciting things, so put it on your calendar. And if you would like to help, get a hold of Cheryl, raise your hand, Cheryl, and Tammy as well. And one of the ideas that we had is having people bring your spiritual books or self-improvement books or nutritional books or medical books that you don't want anymore and we'll sell them in baskets. So if you have books like that you're cleaning out, trying to pare down a little bit, please bring them to the church. Did you want to say anything more about that, Jenny? Good enough? Okay. So put it, put it down. Please bring them in ASAP. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Reverend Dennis is having an introductory class on the basics of the six forms of meditation called learning how to meditate. They're going to be an afternoon and an evening session and it's available starting on July 13th, which is a Wednesday. The um, afternoon one will start at two and the evening one will start at six and there is a sign-up sheet about to be passed around. Please feel free. Dennis's classes are always fabulous. You will not be sorry that you gave up a little tiny piece of your summer to come. <laughs> Pets play such an important role in our lives. I have to tell you, we're staying out at Lake Cabin right now with four, count them, four dogs. I'm not feeling real blessed by them at the moment. <laughs> Um, Reverend Dennis is holding a pet blessing on Saturday, August 6th from 10 to 11. It's a very special ceremony that is one of his favorites. So sign up so we know how many people to come and how much blessing and how many poop bags to have with us, right? <laughs> what? And it talked about people bringing their horses in. It did happen. <laughs> so, so I just think, you know, bring in any animal that you want. It would be cool. <laughs> and you're going to have to Google how to, how to bless a, a horse, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> how about snakes? <laughs> okay, all right. Now, another thing that I'm really excited about is the Adopt a Parking Lot Medium Challenge. We want our parking lot to look gorgeous, and there's just a few little weeds and a few of the medians, and so we are asking people to adopt a median. Maribel, where are you? Will you stand up? 
She's going to be standing right outside there with a clipboard. I think six of the 12 medians have been adopted, and all that we ask is you weed it, and then there's a big stack of uh, bark out this way that you can wheelbarrow over to cover that up, or if you have some ground cover plants you'd like to put in, it would be muchly appreciated. Thank you for thinking about that. Each, each of the medians is numbered, and so you can just tell her which one that you're willing to take on. No ground cover. No, <laughs> no, you're pulling the weeds. That's right, that's right. And so I think now we're going to meet and greet. Greet your neighbor, and when you hear the gong, you have to come back and sing again. <laughs> So you guys get to sing without a gong. Woohoo! I'm not a very good gong. There you go. Woohoo! So now we have an inspirational person reading an inspirational message. Steve. Well, good morning. good morning. I'm not used to being on this side. <laughs> the good news is that Christmas is only five and a half months away. <laughs> and then we can finally get some decent weather. So, <laughs> daily inspiration. Wisdom flows from a combination of your intelligence and your faith. To use wisdom means to use your mind based on a deep foundation of love and trust in God. We are spiritual beings riding along on a human caravan of exploration and learning. And on this fascinating journey, if we use both our minds and our hearts, that's when we find out who and what we are. That's when we discover our very reason for being here. The power of wisdom is always available to you. Use it. Let your intellect, combined with a deep faith in the Spirit of God, 
take you places that will blow your socks off. <laughs> and so it is. Namaste. Please join us and we let it be. So let's take a few minutes now in meditation. I invite you to close your eyes, put down anything that you might be holding, just to give yourself permission to move into the moment, to move deeply into this holy instant of the Spirit of God. And so what we do is we we move quietly inside and we let the love of the Spirit of God that's deep within us, we let that love emerge from us and wash over us. This love from the Spirit of God is one of the wisest things that we do. 
because it lets us take our spiritual journey, our human journey, deeper and deeper and deeper. We come to know that the Spirit of God moves us. It frees us. It opens our hearts and our minds to the very experience of God. So we breathe in and we breathe out. We breathe in the love of God and we breathe out the love of God. Because this deep, holy love that emerges from us and washes over us is what we share with one another, is what we share with the world. Loving kindness. Imagine yourself just immersed in loving kindness that has washed over you and that that is the very nature of your being. And let's take that awareness of deep love into the silence for a moment. And let's just be with it. Let's feel it and experience and pulsate with it in the silence. Spirit of God, you take us so deep. You move us so profoundly. And we understand that love is the very nature of who and what we are. And we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Wasn't it pretty? Yeah. Well, 97 years ago today, so July 10th, 1925, is when the Scopes Monkey Trial began. And if you haven't heard that title before, that name before, it actually became one of the most famous trials in the history of the United States. And it became very famous for a whole variety of reasons. The, the first reason was that a teacher went on trial for teaching the theory of evolution. And so in 1925, it became this huge issue. And then there were some other factors involved too that made it such a, a famous trial. Um, the uh, ACLU got involved. The ACLU had just begun. The American Civil Liberties Union. 
the uh, state senate had just passed a, a bill called the, the Butler Act. And the Butler Act had been passed in March of 1925. Uh, and um, many people, many scientists, and uh, this newfound American Civil Liberties Union felt that the Butler Act was unconstitutional. And they felt that it was unconstitutional because what it did was it made it uh, a crime, a, a misdemeanor, for a science teacher to teach the theory of evolution in a public school. Uh, well, the ACLU got involved and they began actively looking for somebody who wanted to become a test case. So they met John Scopes, uh, and uh, John Scopes agreed to do this. He was a football coach, and he was a substitute science teacher. And so he said, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do that. I'll, uh, I'll be your test case. So <clears throat> he um, uh, was arrested on May 7th. 1925. So the law is passed in March. He agrees to do so uh, to teach in April. He's arrested in May. Uh, and um, so what happens then is this huge trial begins. It, it didn't necessarily have to be a huge trial, but a whole number of factors just seem to conspire together to make it perhaps the most followed trial in the history of the United States uh, until the time of OJ. Right. And, and so here were some of the factors that, that got involved. I'll already mentioned the ACLU had just begun. They were looking for something to uh, give them more visibility. Uh, John Scopes was really interested in saying a science teacher ought to be allowed to teach what he wants, ought to be able to uh, be able to teach the latest developments in science. Attorneys got involved, not just your run of the day, uh, run of the mill attorneys. Uh, instead, William Jennings Bryan heard about this case. He, uh, a three-time Democratic candidate for the presidency. He was pretty famous. And uh, he, so he volunteered to be the attorney for the prosecution. Pretty big name. They said, okay. Clarence Darrell was the most famous defense attorney in the United States. When he heard that William Jennings Bryan had volunteered, he volunteered for the defense. Uh, and um, one other thing happened here, and that was, it was in Dayton, Tennessee, about 45 minutes from the Georgia border, so you're into the Deep South, and it was in, the trial began July 10th, and so what happened was, it was pretty hot. Uh, and so... Uh, the judge moved the trial outside because it's 1925 and there's no air conditioning. So, as a result, about a thousand people are able to attend each day of the trial. Uh, and what's more, about a hundred newspapers were represented from all over the country. They, uh, they took movie reels of the trial. Uh, and this was the first trial that was ever broadcast over the radio. So pretty big exposure, one last thing, and that was that there was a man named George Rapelia uh, in Dayton. He was a local businessman, and he didn't care about the trial one way or the other, but he wanted to try and attract a whole bunch of tourists to the town. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so Rapelia was involved too. Well, it was almost as if this was a perfect storm of all these different events leading together to kind of wrestle with this issue. Does a science teacher get to teach science? Does a science teacher get to teach the latest developments in, in science? Um, William Jennings Bryan not only was the uh, prosecuting attorney, he was also considered an expert in fundamentalism, in uh, the literal interpretation of the Bible. And uh, so, what happened was they, uh, the prosecution called several different witnesses. <laughs> By the way, seven of the witnesses were students of John Scopes, and he had to coach them on how to testify against him. 
uh, because they were a little rough on, on what exactly the theory of evolution was. Because Scopes later said he wasn't even sure if he actually ever taught the theory of evolution or not. So, Brian gets involved and the prosecution is able to bring all of the uh, expert witnesses that they want to. The defense, uh, led by Clarence Darrow, wants to bring their expert witnesses. They want to bring witnesses in geology, in archaeology, in anthropology, uh, and in physics, because physics is really getting started about that time. And uh, the judge says no. The judge says the defense can't bring any witnesses. And so, as the trial is coming to a close, Clarence Darrow does his closing argument and says to the jury, you have to find my client guilty. This is the defense attorney defending the defendant, saying, jury, you have to find him guilty. Uh, and the reason he did that was he wasn't able to bring any witnesses forward, uh, and he wanted there to be grounds for the case to be uh, appealed. Well, the jury went out for nine minutes and came back with a guilty verdict. Uh, so Scopes was, uh, it was a misdemeanor. Scopes was fined $100. Yeah, 100 bucks then was about $1,500 today. And, and so 1500 bucks, I don't know about you, that'd be rough for me to pay. And, and so here's, again, interesting stuff. William Jennings Bryan, the attorney for the prosecution, went to Scopes and offered to pay the $100 fine. <laughs> because he said he knew that the whole thing was ridiculous. But he didn't want the Bible attack. Okay, uh, then, George Rapelia, the businessman for the local community, he offered to pay the $100. The ACLU, they offered to pay the $100. So everybody's offering to pay the money because everybody knew it was a, a silly kind of a, uh, of a trial. Matter of fact, the state senate that passed the trial later said, we never thought anybody would actually try and enforce this law. So um, it became kind of a moot issue about the $100 fine uh, because after three days, the court overturned it, threw it out, and, and uh, it was no longer an issue. Okay, so... Why am I spending 10 minutes talking about a trial that happened 97 years ago? Well, I think it, it's, it's a really interesting case because it's something that I probably have people talk to me about, I don't know, maybe two or three times a month, where they're saying, I'm not sure. You know, I, I, I want to use my mind, I want to use my intellect, and, and I'm not sure if I can do that and still you know, be involved with God and spirit and faith. I said, it seems like two contradictory things to me. So I do hear that uh, a, a couple times a month. And so the question becomes, you know, um, do advances in science, does that diminish our faith? Do, I mean, does every, every time science comes up with a new development, does that chip away just a little bit at our, our faith, our spirit of God? Uh, that's what William Jennings Bryan testified to uh, during the trial. He said, every time science comes up with a new advance, it diminishes our faith. And here's my point of view. My point of view is if an advance in science diminishes our faith, it's not a very strong faith to begin with. I think instead, I, I mean, I love science. I, I, I love a good education. I think it's really important. And to me, every advance in science, what that does is it doesn't diminish my faith. Instead, what it does is it allows me to ask better questions. It allows me to ask more precise questions. It helps me really get involved and say, oh, science and faith, they're not, they're not opposed to one another. They really help each other out. There was another movie, uh, oh, oh, by the way, that last movie on the John Scopes trial, you've probably seen it at one time or another. That was Inherit the Wind. Uh, so 
there's another movie from 1956, The King and I. You know, and uh, it was great. Now, uh, Anna Leon Owens is a, a teacher from England, and she's hired, uh, and by the way, this is a true story, uh, she's hired in uh, 1862 by the King of Siam. And he wants her to come to the court in Siam, uh, and he wants her to teach English and science to him, to his 27 wives, and to his 82 children. Uh, and um, at one point, he, uh, after she's been there a couple months, he's talking to uh, Anna, and the king of Siam says, you know what, uh, I think Moses must have been a very foolish man. And she says, she says why? why? Why would uh, Moses be a foolish man? And uh, the king said, because in your Bible, it says that the world was created in six days. And he said, you and I both know that it took six centuries to create the, the world, the universe, the earth. Well, he might have been off a little bit there. But he understood something that, oh, sometimes spiritual things and sometimes scientific things say stuff that's contradictory to one another. And, and as a matter of fact, let me, let me get this quote here. He also says um, he's, he's talking to some diplomats from England. And... Um, he says, um, uh, the, the diplomats from England are there to judge for Queen Victoria whether or not the King of Siam is a barbarian. <laughs> and so uh, he says, he tells, them, uh, he tells the diplomats, through constant questioning and debate, men of science and men of faith always manage to come to the same conclusion. I thought, how true. You know, I, I think once we get away from the folk stories and the children's stories of 3,000 years ago in the uh, Bible and Christianity or 4,000 years ago from the uh, Buddhism and the Tripitaka uh, or the Torah and Judaism, you know, what we find is once we get away just from some of the surface stuff, what we learn in science and what we learn in faith and religion and spirituality they really do support one another extraordinarily well. And as I said before, I, I think one of the best things that it does is it helps us ask better questions. It helps us understand something that's called first cause. Have you heard that phrase before, first cause? First cause is, is something you've spoken to yourself a thousand times before and, and you've heard, but you probably haven't heard it by that name. First cause means that at some point there had to be something that started the universe. You know, do you believe in the Big Bang? Cool. Uh, here's this drop of energy, it explodes, it creates the universe as we know it. But the first cause says, okay, but how did the drop of energy get there in the first place? So, again, okay, we, you know, we've all kind of wrestled with that. Um, what we come up with is a number of scientists, really well-known scientists, who throughout the centuries have, had, have been able to be scientific and yet at the same time have a deep faith in God. And it's because of this first cause phenomenon. So you have people like uh, Sir Isaac Newton, and you have Albert Einstein, and you have Carl Sagan, and you have James Maxwell, you have Max Planck. Uh, Max Planck was uh, involved with... Uh, particle physics. Um, you know, uh, so many different people who are saying, once I really understand the phenomena going on in the world, then, especially because of this idea of first cause, you know, it makes sense to let my spirituality be informed by great questions. So, uh, I mean, one of the issues around first cause is to take a look at the different sizes of particles, right? And, and so uh, I mean, there was a point when they said, oh, the atom can't be split, and 
And they do more research and they say, oh, it's electrons and protons and neutrons. Well, I say, well, that's it. It certainly can't go any further. It can't get any smaller. You know, but it does. And uh, you know, we discover things like leptons and fermions and uh, gluons and muons. And uh, it's kind of like, okay, well, it can't get any smaller now. And, and so right now, really for about the last 30 years, they've said the, uh, the smallest particle is a quark. And we've... We've all heard that name quark, right? So that refers to the smallest particle that there is. But just uh, recently, there's uh, somebody coming out saying, no, we think there's something smaller than the quark. And, and so just so you can all be the first to hear it, it's called a prion. And so prions help make up a quark. It's kind of like, well, how long will this go on? I mean, do you keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller? And what it does, once again, is just to inform us tremendously that, oh, science helps me ask great questions. It helps me ask them from a place of wonder, from a place of awe, to say, oh, okay, so we got this big bang 13.7 billion years ago. It explodes and it helps create the universe as we know it. How? See, what we discover, I think, is that science is tremendous at answering what and when and where. But it takes faith to answer why. Matter of fact, Carl Sagan exactly said that. <clears throat> Carl Sagan said, we are now at the point where we think we can understand how God made the universe. He said, but we still don't know why. And that's kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, what that says is, uh, so what's the why? I mean, why is it here? What, what do we gain out of this? And what a great, precise kind of question to ask, because what it does is it leads us directly to, I must be here for some purpose. There must be something I'm supposed to add. There must be something that I'm supposed to learn but there must be something that I can share with the world too. I mean, that's why we, why, why we have this great laboratory that's been created. That's why we have particular skills, some of them like everybody else's, and some of them that are unique and germane just to us. And it's kind of like, yeah, let's, let's move forward on that skill, that, that one item, that one piece that we have that nobody else really has. And I know I've said this many times before, but I really like it. Deepak Chopra said, every person in the world is part of a great jigsaw puzzle, and there's no extra pieces. And what he's saying is, we can't put it all together unless you contribute your share, unless you contribute your skill, unless you contribute your thoughts, your wisdom, your ideas. So, uh, and by the way, I will probably quote Deepak Chopra, no more than 30 or 40 more times this year. <laughs> Just to give us a couple of uh, examples around the profundity of the questions we can ask. It's all right, science right now is saying the universe is about 13.7 billion years old. How can that be? You know, I mean, I can accept that. What existed before? How did those forces come into being, come into play with one another? The uh, science would say, oh, the, uh, the earth is about 4.5 billion years old. Really, how did it come into being? What, what was it? And the science answers that question about how it got created. We could keep asking deeper and deeper questions. Well, then, how did we come about? What forces helped create us? So, it's just, I guess this is just my way of saying that I love the way science and faith can really work together. Because they teach us the, the right questions to ask. So, I'm, I'm going to close this with a quote by Carl Sagan. And here's what Sagan said. He said, I can't imagine a God who would give us intelligence and reasoning without wanting us to use them. 
Yeah, I mean, isn't that great? Let me say that one more time. I can't imagine a God who would give us intelligence and reasoning without wanting us to use them. Because um, going back to the Scopes trial, what happened was <coughs> Clarence Nero ended up putting William Jenny Bryan, uh, called him as a witness for the defense. It's outside, there's about a thousand people there. And Brian tried to stick to a literal interpretation of the Bible. Uh, Darrow asked him, do you really believe that uh, women were created out of a rib from Adam? Yes. Well, how could that be? He goes, I don't know, but I just accept it. Uh, and uh, he said, well, Adam and Eve were the only two people on earth, right, according to the Bible? Yeah. Well, how is it that Cain went out and knew his wife? Where did that wife come from? <laughs> and uh, William Jane Bryan had the greatest quote ever. He said, I don't know. I don't think about things that I don't think about. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to leave you with that idea. When it comes to spirituality and faith as they work together, what I want to say is, Let's think about the things that we think about. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah.
really nice. That was goosebump stuff. <laughs> well, now it's time in the service when we ask folks to give of their financial blessings to this ministry. If this is your first time here, please don't give. Be our guest. And we always have someone from the congregation who reads our Sunday Prosperity Blessing. And today, this gracious volunteer is Donna. If she can get up on the stage. Good morning. It is that time of the service when we ask you to give of your financial blessings. And as you give to our church, do it in gratitude for the gift that the Spirit has, of God has given you, wisdom. Wisdom is a knowing based in the Spirit of God. When you think and speak and act from a place of divine wisdom, you will feel a fountain of love moving within you. Your wisdom and your love of doing the right thing they will give you every answer you seek, always. Namaste. See, now, I got to see something that everybody else here didn't get to see. And as I stood up, here's these four ladies back there just kind of dancing and getting <laughs> It was pretty cool. <laughs> so thank you for these love offering blessings. Would you, would you join me in a, in a blessing? So Spirit of God, always we want to say thank you. The financial gifts are important. But what's far more important is that we learn to, to tap into our wisdom and our faith and our, our deep love of the Spirit of God within us. There are so many ways that we can understand this whole world. But intellect and wisdom and faith, great faith and love, they're all right there at the top of the list. And so we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Now, in theory, the kids are right outside that door. Let's see. <laughs> well, they're a little further outside the door than we thought.
So I just got this uh, this signal from Donna back there who said, the kids are coming. <laughs> oh, I thought she said there was one kid. <laughs> so, well, he wasn't yeah, well, this, uh, this gives me a, a great opportunity to remind you of um, the fact that we've got uh, the islands. So you're supposed to adopt an island. So you can sign up the sheet, uh, sign up on the sheet uh, that's uh, just right outside the door as you're leaving because we want to try to get our grounds looking really pretty. Here come the kids, come on up. Yay! <laughs> so, Amber, what, what did the kids learn about today? Um, so today we talked about uh, purpose and that all things have a, a purpose. And we also talked about how humans have the unique ability to repurpose things and find new purposes. And so today we repurposed some of the pine cones that we had been collecting uh, around the Unity grounds and turned them into bird feeders and hung them around the grounds. So that's why we were outside doing a messy craft and just came in and, and missed our cue, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if you'd like to go back to your parents or grandparents, that'd be great. And uh, as you hear me say every Sunday, uh, as the kids are coming back, uh, the parents or guardians still need to uh, sign the kids out too. That would be great. Now let me invite you to stand if you would, and we'll sing our peace song. Would you join me in the prayer for protection? Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Thanks for being here today. Post Lude. Baby. 
Jonah, he lived it away. 